All right, seven graphic design mistakes you should never make. Oh, wait. Oh, there you are. Sorry about that. Hey, seven graphic design mistakes you should never make. If you're a graphic designer, your income and your success is dependent upon your skills. And a lot of graphic designers don't understand design principles. So in this one, I'm gonna show you guys seven mistakes. I'm gonna really help you guys transform the way you guys do graphic design by the end of this video. So you're probably stressed out because you're not getting enough graphic design work and you're going, what is going on? Why can't I get any graphic design clients? Well, it's probably because your graphic design skills are not up to par and maybe there's just some basic mistakes that you're making that could get you more work. So the first step to this is gonna be becoming a better designer. And if you stick with me till the end of this video, these seven steps that I'm gonna share with you are gonna help you do just that. So make sure you got a pen and paper and take some notes because you're gonna to wanna to apply these, not just hear what I have to say. So I've seen some work recently shared by a lot of different graphic designers, and I keep seeing these common mistakes come up time and time again. And I wanted to point these mistakes out, and that's what inspired this video, is understanding what are these common mistakes people are making and how you can avoid them from making your work look cheap or underpaid or undervalued or just subpar. And that's probably why people are not hiring you and why you're not getting enough client work. So the first step in that is to increase your skills. The first way you can increase your skills by watching videos like this and learning what mistakes not to make. There's one thing to learn what to do, but it's also important to learn what not to do. So that's the first thing. The second reason why I think people aren't hiring you is you're not paying attention to what the market wants. So many creatives are just doing what they want to do rather than what the market is paying for. This is a really important element to this, this point I wanna make is you need to follow the demand. If there are other graphic designers that you look up to that you respect, and if you don't, you need to find some that are doing the similar type of work that you're doing, model what's working. You know that they're making money. You know that they're successful. They keep getting clients. They keep getting projects. So model what works. When I started in my career back in 2006, 2007, I modeled fellow graphic designers who were doing nightlife flyers and promotional flyers. And I modeled the same styles and the same elements in their work. So follow what the market is paying for. Don't just create something because you think it looks good. All right, so let's get to the third reason why I think people are not hiring you. And that's because you're not showing your work to enough people. How many people are you making offers to on a daily, weekly, monthly, and even yearly basis? If you don't have numbers, if you don't have a plan in place, this is an area that's hurting you. You need to be going out there and sharing your work. We have a gentleman that's inside of our Instagraphics Pro Network that does billboard designs. He knows who this is. He knows who he is. He's watching this video, I'm sure. But he is constantly sharing his work on his Facebook, on his Twitter, on all these different social profiles. He's sharing the work that he does over and over again. And his work is beautiful and people are seeing it. And he's building momentum that way. Your work is your social proof. It's a form of social proof, which means it's a proof that you do really good work. And if you have the skill sets, people are going to seek you out. And if you do that consistently, it's going to lead people back to you. It's pulling the rope versus pushing the rope. This is a really important point. You need to be sharing your work on a daily basis. You're doing tons and tons of projects and you may not be leveraging this opportunity. All right, so before we jump into the actual graphic design mistakes, I'm curious, what is the number one most common mistake that you see as a graphic designer in other people's work? What is it that you see over and over again? I wanna know, I wanna engage with you, I wanna get to know you. Drop a comment down below so I can say hello and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, graphic design mistake number one is overusing layer effects. Now this specifically applies to Photoshop more than it does Illustrator, but inside of Photoshop they have layer effects. And layer effects are an important piece of actually designing and actually incorporating and making designs look beautiful. But I see them constantly being overused. And recently I saw some work and I was like, oh my goodness, your biggest issue is that you're doing too many layer effects bevels and embosses and textures and gradients and drop shadows and outer glows and inner shadows and strokes and all these different things. If you put all of those on there, it's gonna look hideous. You only need to add one, if not maybe, maybe two layer effects to your designs. Now, typography specifically, this is even more important because you can easily make typography look cheesy, make it look blurry, and just make it not look that great. Think about things as more of a simplified, clean, crisp layout. You wanna have your text be easily read and the more effects you 
add to it, the harder it's gonna be to read. And the messaging is what's most important about the design. So don't overuse the layer effects. Keep it simple when it comes to your layer effects. The second graphic design mistake you should not make, and I see this all the time, it drives me wild, is contrast, poor contrast, either contrasting too much or not contrasting enough. I saw a design recently that had like a brown background and then it had like a lighter brown lettering. And I'm like, dude, what is this person thinking? You can't see it, it's not visible. And then the opposite angle of that is doing a white background with black, pitch black text. That's really hard on the eyes. If you wanna make something that's more visually appealing, you wanna soften it up a little bit. If you wanna make it to where it's contrast, but not overly contrast so that it's hard on the eyes. This is a common mistake I see people a lot, a lot of the time do, is they'll take a light blue text with a dark blue background and the contrast is just not there. Making sure that your contrast is appropriate is really, really important. So keep it simple. All right, the third graphic design mistake you should not make. Number three, this is a big one, poor color palettes. I see people mixing colors that have no business being on the same canvas. Do not do this, this is a big mistake and if you're not using a color palette tool to find your monochromatic and triad and complementary and triad complementary and all the different effects, there's a really neat tool that I want you to have. It's, this is a free gift for you. You can check it out, we'll even stick a link in the description but it's called Coolors, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot co. It allows you to make really neat color palettes. I actually did this for my own brand where I put my main A42027 code in there, I locked that in. You can do different shades and you can pick different combinations where you can generate a color code. I use a blue as part of my color code. I use a light white or almost a white, kind of a little bit of an off white. I use a couple different shades of my red and this is a really important tool to use to make sure that your colors actually scientifically match. If you're pairing orange and green, you're gonna get Halloween, right? If you pair green and red, you're gonna get Christmas. A lot of people do this and they don't really understand the color psychology, so you need to understand two really important things when it comes to color palettes, is color psychology and color pairing. Pairing the right colors together is a major deal. If you don't do this right, it's one of the quickest things that can make your, look, your design work look amateur. All right, graphic design mistake number four that you should not make is outdated typography and pairing. Now there's two parts to this. A lot of people are using old school fonts like Trajan and Times and Arial. Don't use those fonts. Those fonts are outdated, they're boring. You need to be a little bit more innovative. Now there's always an exception to the rule, but the general rule is find fonts that are more cutting edge, that are new, that are fresh, that are vibrant, that have a lot of life to them. Now there are some classics out there that I still love like Century Gothic and Avenir, but the go-to tool that I use when it comes to fonts is Google Fonts. They use really nice, high quality fonts and you can use Adobe Fonts. Those are two really good options for you, but don't use old school fonts and you wanna make sure that you pair your fonts correctly. Try not to do a serif with a sans serif. Most of the time that doesn't work out very well. Keep a consistent font on your design. If you're using three, four, or five fonts on one design, your, your design is gonna go downhill very quickly with each font that you add. I usually recommend no more than two fonts on the design. So this is something I want you to understand is don't use old school fonts, use something new and fresh, and don't pair old fonts with new fonts and just keep it consistency. Consistency is the key. Graphic design mistake number five. I hope you're ready for this one because this is a very common one. I see probably more than almost any mistake is your backgrounds. Do not complicate and over clutter your backgrounds. I see people trying to blend black and white photos into the background and multiple images into the background and cut out photos and cropped photos. Keep your background simple. Don't do gradients in your background. Keep it one consistent color. Now you can use textures. I think textures can be okay. But you wanna make sure that it's a simple texture. And if it's a busy texture, you need to blend and reduce the opacity of that texture so that it's not overpowering and taking away from the context and the message and overall the most important thing, which is the objective of the design. I've used some wood backgrounds in the pattern in the backgrounds of my designs in the past and that has helped but I've also cut down the opacity or blended it in a way that didn't take away from the messaging. You wanna stay away from busy backgrounds, keep it simple, focus on the content, not just the design. Graphic design mistake 
number six that you should not make, and this one is usually on the client side, but it's your job as the content creator, as the graphic designer, as the person that's leading this project, which is probably going to be a marketing piece. So as the person that's leading the design side of this marketing campaign, you need to make sure that your content and your verbiage is on point. Now, what do I mean by on point? A lot of people put too much content, too much verbiage, and they try to stuff it full of so much information. It is not a book. You need to have a clear objective for this marketing piece. And when people don't have a clear objective, it's a dead giveaway by their content. They just fill it in with much information as possible. And a lot of really great graphic designers that I've seen Wes, who I mentioned earlier in this video, they simplify the messaging and they take more away. Less is more, keep it simple. What is the main outcome that you want from this marketing piece? What is the objective? There's a lot of information that can be given after the fact, after they've engaged. What is the minimum amount of information that they need to be able to take this action? How do you compel them to take an action? Putting out a whole paragraph worth of information at the bottom of a flyer or five paragraphs on a one page, that is too much information. You just need to give them enough to want more. Always leave them wanting more, never going, oh my gosh, this is too much, never mind, right? If they give them too many options and too much information, they'll just go a different direction because they're confused and overwhelmed. This is an important mistake that I don't want you to make. All right, to the last one, last but not least, and that is hierarchy. This is the last graphic design mistake that I see people commonly make is they size everything the same or some of the most important information is too small. Some of the stuff that is irrelevant is too big, like grand opening. Okay, that's cool, that's an important piece, but that does that need to be the biggest thing on the flyer? Maybe the phone number should be the biggest thing on the flyer. Maybe on the website, whether you're doing a website, a flyer, a business card. Some people take business cards and they put logos on them that cover three quarters of the size of the card. And I'm like, what are you doing? A contact information on the business card is most important. So understanding hierarchy of what needs to be where and positioned in what spot. Just as a rule of thumb, just to give you a quick example, when I started designing club flyers, one of the methodologies that I used for hierarchy that really helped me a lot is I would design the flyer and I would format the content and the layout of that flyer as if I were reading it on a radio ad, a TV ad, or some sort of online ad. And so I would give them the event information that they needed first and foremost. December 22nd, 2020, blah, 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 whatever it's ABC Company Presents, and then the name of the event, and that would be huge, because I want them to remember the name of the event. So you'd have the date of the event up top, that's the first thing, so they know what the date is. They go, oh, okay, I'm busy that day. This company's presenting it, so they go, oh, I've heard of that company. And then boom, here's the name of the event. And then below that, I would have some cool images, maybe some little bullet points, some specials that would be much smaller. And then down at the bottom, how do you take that next step? What is the call to action? Whether it's a website, where to get tickets, what the ticket price is, certain information like that. And I would format it just like if I was reading it on the radio or on TV or on some sort of online ad. You want it to read naturally as they're going through it, a natural hierarchy. So those are the seven graphic design mistakes you shouldn't make. Hierarchy is a big one. You wanna make sure you get that right. And if you don't know what hierarchy is and you still need more understanding, I have videos on my channel about that. I just wanna be here as a resource. So make sure you drop a comment down below if you have any questions. If you found any of these tips helpful, please throw a like on it. I don't get paid to do these videos. I'm just doing them because I wanna help our community grow. I wanna help our creative industry grow. And I just wanna help our industry become better overall. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.